What is going on everybody? It's Medicosis Perfectionatus where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our chemistry quick review playlist. A playlist for busy people who want to get good at chemistry without wasting time on the mumbo jumbo. Today we'll talk about the periodic table. Why call it periodic? Because we have periods. Here's the first period, second period, third period, fourth, fifth, sixth, and the last one is the seventh period. It's called the periodic table of the elements. How many elements are there? If you look at the periodic table, you'll find 118 elements. Only 94 exist in nature, from 1 until 94. Beyond this, we synthesized in the lab. Let's get started. Please watch the videos in this chemistry quick review playlist in order. In video number one, we talked about the 10 commandments of chemistry. It was all about energy and matter. Matter could be pure or a mixture. The pure matter, if it's made of one type of atom, is called element, such as oxygen. It just has oxygen, that's one type of atom. But if it has two or more types of atom, that's a compound, such as water. It has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, so it's a compound. What's a substance? It's a physical tangible matter. What's an element? The simplest form of substance, like the elements that we see in the periodic table. They are made of atoms. Sodium as an element is only made of sodium atoms. If you look at your periodic table, sodium is element number 11, which means every atom in the element of sodium has 11 protons. And according to the atomic theory, matter is composed of atoms. Here is a very simplistic form of an atom. In the the center there is the nucleus which has neutrons neutral and protons the protons are positively charged all of that's in the nucleus around the nucleus we have negatively charged electrons the nucleus is positively charged the electrons are negatively charged that's why the atom is neutral when you see the elements in the periodic table we're assuming that we're talking about the neutral atom Neutrons in the nucleus and they are neutral. They do not carry a positive charge or a negative charge. Their mass is important. Protons with a P are positively charged, located in the nucleus. Yes, they carry a charge. It is a positive charge and they have a significant mass. Electrons negatively charged. Around the nucleus, they have a negative charge. Their mass is not significant. It is so tiny. What's the atomic number? It's the number of protons which are positively charged and this happened to equal the number of electrons which are negatively charged that's how you end up with a neutral atom how about the atomic mass or the mass number it's the number of protons plus the number of neutrons look at this here is sodium here is the symbol of sodium which is natrium and a atomic number is here which means that the sodium atom has 11 protons which means 11 electrons i'm talking about a neutral sodium atom when the atomic mass is about 23 it means that the total number of protons plus neutrons equals 23. If protons are 11 and protons plus neutrons is 23, then the neutrons is 23 minus 11 equals 12. Some pearls for the pros. If the number of protons equal the number of electrons, that's a neutral atom carrying no charge. If we have protons and electrons that do not equal one another, then we have a charge. What kind of charge? Is it positive or negative? Well, it depends. If the number of protons exceed the number of electrons, it's a positive ion. We call this a cation. But if the number of negative electrons exceed the number of positive protons, it's an anion or a negative ion. Example, suppose that sodium, which is element number 11, lost an electron. Oh, if it lost an electron, then the number of protons will exceed the number of electrons. We are no longer in equilibrium. The positives are winning now, so it's a positive ion or a cation, Na+. How about the opposite? What if chloride gained an electron? Well, the number of electrons will now exceed the number of protons. The negatives are winning. It's a negative ion, Cl-. If the number of protons and the number of electrons are equal, however, they do not equal the number of neutrons, that's an isotope, and please refer to previous videos in this playlist. 
Now on to today's topic. Please go to www.ptable.com and print their beautiful periodic table. I need hands on deck, finger on element. How many rows do you have in the periodic table? Seven. Thank you so much. How many columns do you have in your periodic table? Answer, 18. Let's add something new. The row is also known as a period. So we have seven periods in total in the periodic table of the elements. As for columns, they are also known as groups. So we have 18 groups in the periodic table. Back to rows, they're also known as series. And we have seven of these. So the word period is the same as series, is the same as rows, is the same as going horizontally. Conversely, the word column is the same as group, is the same as going vertically. Let's talk about the horizontal rows. This number of the row, for example, the first row, second row, etc., denotes the number of shells. I did not say subshells, I said shells. So how many shells does the first row has? The answer, one shell. Hydrogen has one shell of electrons and helium also has one. How about the second row? Well, all of these have two shells. Lithium has two shells, beryllium two shells, boron two shells, carbon two shells, etc, etc. How about sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, all of these? They have three shells. Anything in the fourth row has four shells. In the fifth, five shells. In the sixth, six shells. In the seventh, seven shells of electron. All kinds of shells exist, but what's the name of the outermost shell? It's called the valence shell of electrons. Why should I care about it? Because the electrons on the outer shell are the ones involved in chemical reactions, bond formations, and much more. So chemistry is all about what's happening in the outermost shell, i.e. the valence shell of electrons. With the exception of nuclear chemistry or nuclear physics, which care about what's happening in the nucleus. Let's leave the rows alone and let's talk about the columns or the families now. Here's the first family, second family, third family, etc. The first family, family number one or group one, is also known as group 1A. How about 2? 2A. Skip 3 until 12 and go to 13 is known as 3A. 14, 4A, 15, 5A, 16, 6A, 17, 7A, and 18 is just 18. Now I want you to look at the last digit in each column. All right, 1, 2, how about here, 3, 4, 5, that's why we call it 5a, 6, that's why we call it 6a, 7, that's why we call it 7a, and 8. What does that mean? It means that the outermost shell of all of these elements has only one electron. How about here? The outermost shell of beryllium or magnesium or calcium or strontium has two electrons. Here the outermost shell has three electrons, outermost shell has four electrons, outermost shell has five electrons, outermost shell has six electrons, seven electrons, eight electrons. If you have eight electrons at your outermost shell, you are stable. The number eight in Latin is called octa, as in octagon. And since everyone is trying to become stable, every element is aspiring to have eight electrons in the outermost shell. We call this the octet rule. Look at fluorine, for example. What's the number of the element? Nine. So how many electrons does it have? It has nine, okay? And how many shells? Look at the row. All right, I am here in period number two, in the second row, which means fluorine has two shells like this. And the first shell will have two electrons. And after this, how many are left? Nine minus two is seven, which means the outermost shell of fluorine has seven electrons. Is this stable? Is this octet? No, it is seven, not eight. Therefore, fluorine would love to gain an extra electron to have eight electrons in the outermost shell, i.e. in the valence shell. If fluorine gained an electron, remember that an electron is negatively charged, fluorine will become a negatively charged ion. 
because when you gain a negative electron, you become a negative ion or an anion. This fluorine F is neutral, but when it gains an extra electron, it becomes a negative ion, not neutral anymore. Instead, it has a charge, a negative charge at that. Conversely, look at sodium. How many shells does the sodium atom have? Well, think about it. It's here in the third row. So it has three shells. Let's draw sodium here. First shell, second shell, third shell of electrons. How many electrons does sodium have? Since the atomic number of sodium is 11, it means that sodium has 11 protons and 11 electrons. Okie dokie, let's put those electrons here. One and two in the first shell. And then the second shell will take eight electrons. Two plus eight equals 10. I still have one extra electron. Where will it go? on the outermost shell. Translation, sodium is monovalent. It only has one electron in the outermost shell. The number of electrons in the outermost shell correspond with the number of the group. Now, what should sodium do to become more stable? I.e. to have eight electrons in the outermost shell. Sodium should lose this one electron. If sodium lost this one negative electron, then sodium becomes a positive ion or a negative ion, a positive ion. And this electron will leave the chat. Now sodium is a positive ion known as cation. It has achieved the contentment of the octet state. Do we have exceptions to the octet rule? Yes, we'll talk about that in the next video. Quick note, if you are on the left side of the periodic table, you tend to be a metal, except hydrogen. If you are on the right side of the periodic table, you tend to be a non-metal. In between them, you tend to be a metalloid or a semi-metal, such as the famous silicon, for example, important in semiconductors. Semi-metal, semiconductors. Please memorize the elements from 1 all the way until 38. Add to that silver, gold, cadmium, and mercury. Let's answer the question of the previous video. What's the hyphen notation for an atom or an isotope with 16 protons and 18 neutrons? Can you please pause and try to answer this yourself? Let's do it. Step number one, look at the number of protons. I have 16 protons. Now look at your periodic table. Which element is element number 16? Answer, sulfur. So the answer here has to start with sulfur. But what kind of sulfur? What isotope of sulfur? I.e. what atomic mass or what mass number of sulfur? Is it sulfur 32, sulfur 33, sulfur 34 or what? Easy. All you have to do is to add the number of protons to the number of neutrons. 16 plus 18 equals 34. So the answer is sulfur 34. And here is today's question. How many electrons does carbon have in its valence shell? Let me know your answer in the comment section. You'll find the correct answer in the next video in this series. Are you struggling to learn about the proximal tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal tubule of your kidney? Do you want to learn about filtration fraction, glomerular filtration rate, and how your kidney concentrates or dilutes your urine? Then download my renal physiology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com to master the topic of kidney physiology so that you can help your future patients. There are more than 1,500 free videos on this channel, plus 300 premium ones that you can access right now by joining the highest tier on my channel. Smash like, subscribe, hit the bell, support my channel here or here, download these lovely notes at medicosisperfectionalis.com, go to the same website to get my premium courses, or if you'd like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.